والذين يقولون ربنا هب لنا من ازواجنا وذرياتنا قرة اعين وجعلنا للمتقين اماما On one hand, as a husband, your responsibility is to your wife. You took her from her family. You took her from the protection of her parents. She had a wali, she had a father. And his job was to make sure she stays happy, safe, she's not insulted or humiliated. She's protected from all forms of abuse, physical, emotional, spiritual, all kinds of abuse. That was the father's role. And when you sign that nikah, and when you said you agree, then all of those roles were shifted over to you. You're, you're supposed to be as protective of her, even more so actually, than her father was. Because your relationship with her actually even goes further. She's even the mother of your children. There's, there's more here. And so you were supposed to be a shield around her. At the same time, you are also a son. A son to your mother, a son to your father. And this religion teaches us that we cannot even say oof to our parents. You can't raise your voice to your parents at all. Now you are being pulled in two different directions. You have these enormous obligations to your spouse. Mithaqan ghalidha, the Quran calls it. A heavy contract, a heavy agreement. It's not a light thing, marriage. And on the other hand, you have this enormous responsibility to your parents. And sometimes, they make you pick which one you're going to be good to. And your job is actually to draw a line and say, this is what I will do for my wife, this is what, how I will take care of her, and this is how I will protect her. And to let your parents know, you can say whatever you want to me. You can beat me up, you curse me out, I'm your kid. You can do whatever you want, it's fine. I'll take it. But you can't touch her. You can't say a word to her. She's not yours. She's not your responsibility and she's not your child. Especially the culture I come from, you know what they say when the girl's getting married? They say, oh, she's like our daughter. Oh, it's like we have a new daughter in the family. Beware when you hear those words. Be th girls, be thoroughly warned. Because when they, she's, like, they say she's like our daughter, trouble is looming. Just a couple of weeks later, there's going to be commentary about how you didn't cook, or you cooked you know, with too much salt, or you know, you're lazy, or you didn't clean, or some stuff is going to begin. No, 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 no. The relationship between this woman and her husband's family, first and foremost, is a relationship of mutual respect. She has to be treated with respect, and she has to treat with respect. When it comes to rights and obligations, she is under no obligation to obey your parents. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry in that I feel sorry for you that you believe that for so long. But your, your wife has no obligation to obey your parents. And if you are forcing her to obey your parents and serve your parents, you are engaged in an act of injustice. And making sure that you, con you constantly check yourself and make sure that the relationship remains healthy is commitment, is constancy. It's from it comes the word istiqama, which means fairness, even al-adl. That they maintain fairness over it. One of my favorite meanings of it that I didn't even share with you is qum. Men are supposed to be not only there for their women in terms of caretaking and protection, they're supposed to give their women a sense of purpose and direction. They're actually supposed to, in a sense, even be mentors to their wives. Mentors to them, advisors to them. This is what you should do. Hey, I, let, let me help you fulfill this goal or that goal. How many times there are, especially in, in abusive family situations, there are women that used to have goals. I want to, I want to start an orphanage. I want to do this. I want to write a book. I want to do that. And they don't get to do any of it. Who is supposed to encourage them and open up that door for them and say, yeah, you, you should do it. <laughs>